What's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. Today we're going to be doing an email Q&A and right now I have five emails I'm going to quickly go through and then if we have some time we'll move over to some comments, okay? So the first one here is, I'm paranoid about getting ick again. Is there anything wrong with treating fish with copper during QT even if the fish shows no signs of ick? Uh, yes, I like to put preventative treatments into all of my quarantine tanks depending on the species that I'm actually quarantining. Uh, at least a half a dose and then eventually over the entire month that they're in quarantine I will gradually work up to the full dose of copper but uh, again it's more of a preventative because sometimes fish don't show signs of ick or anything like that until they become a little bit more stressed out and that might not happen until they're in your uh, main display so it's always good to either do a uh, preventative treatment with hypo and or uh, copper or cooper mean or whatever you want to call it all right uh, next question do you ever uh, plan on upgrading the 300 gallon or to a bigger one uh yeah so as soon as i leave this place i think i'm going to be here for five or six years depending on i guess finances and, and uh, how things generally life goes um if i knew i was going to move to this specific location i would have already had a bigger tank i would have had custom aquariums build me a bigger one but my plan is going to be a 10 foot by four foot by three foot tall so that is essentially the the biggest tank that i want to go through and a lot of my filtration will transfer over to that size tank i might do a new uh, custom sump and um you know reactors and all that kind of stuff depending on really uh, if i plan on moving in that direction so i guess for the 300, I'm going to grow it out completely for as long as that I'm here, and I'll probably frag out all the coral like I did with the 125 to build the new system, and then I'll most likely sell this entire tank, set up uh, everything that you have there as is, um, so somebody can just kind of plug and play on their own. So yeah, I do plan on getting bigger, uh, a bigger tank, just uh, not sure when. All right, our next email is from Kyle, and his first question is, when getting new Acropora or SPS frags, do you put them under the lower par lighting in quarantine and ramp it up, or do you just put them in their appropriate par level? Well, it really comes down, for me personally, where I source the Acropora from. Now, I get most of mine from local hobbyists where I've seen the tanks, I know how they're run, I know that they're pest-free, and then I know what their current par reading is, and I just, you know, just emulate that in quarantine. Now, I know that's definitely not an option for everybody, and is the reason why I'll be soon adding par um, levels and numbers to my Acropora on my website, so people know what that Acro is currently sitting at, so they can, again, emulate that in quarantine or their main display when they get it. And uh, my best bet would be is if you are not sure what the par is, is to start low. It's always best to start low. If the coral turns brown or gets darker, you know that it needs a little bit more light, and uh you can go ahead and make that adjustment. So I would start around the 250, work your way up maybe to 350, and then I don't know what your display is, but you know, mine goes from a 200 all the way up to 650, and uh, you can put it anywhere you want in between then. There, all right? Now the next question here is, uh, do you base your par for each Acropora by genus, or do you generally put most Acropora in the same par? Well, uh, again, like I mentioned, the 300 goes from the 200 at the bottom glass to about 657 at the very top of the Acropora, uh, that uh, Fish of Hex Millie. So I tend to have a, a pretty big range to put them, but I like to stay in the safe ranges that most Acropora are happy in. And again, that's going to be between the 250 and 350, just like the most, most SPS. Again, I have uh, the Fish of Hex Millie at the top around that 650, 700, but I also have a same frag of that down at about 250 ish 280 something like that and it's growing it has well it has the same color but the growth is a little bit more on the higher end uh, light side you know with the one that's sitting up there a little bit higher so um, stay within the safe range and of course every acro is going to be different every tank is going to be different and you can always move an acro if it's not happy all right last question for kyle here uh, same as number two do you base your par for each sps based on species or treat most sps the same uh, just like the acropora i keep it pretty much the same you stay within that 250 to 350 seems to be uh, generally safe for most corals depending on again if they're maricultured if they're grown in a tank you really you have to start low and then make the adjustment based on coloration growth and polyp extension so hopefully that answers your questions try not to make it uh, very complicated if you can make it simple you could progress through and make changes as needed all right man all right, moving on to our next email here. Uh, hey, thanks for taking our questions. Number one, what difference did you notice in the Acropora after switching to radions from the black box LEDs? Now, um, I never had black boxes over the 300, so I don't really know how this particular system would have done with them. It was an option, but it fell through, and um, so I went to the XR15s. 
Now, when it comes to the 125, that's where I had the black box with the T5 uh, setup. It was four um, black box LEDs and four um, T5 bulbs. With the 300, we have eight XR15s and eight T5 bulbs. Um, and really, I'll tell you right now, the growth is much better in this tank with Acropora, not so much LPS, and the coloration and polyp extension is much better in this tank. And uh, just the way the Acropora grow is a lot different. I feel that the spread is better on the XR15, so that really helps the coral grow and not so much reach directly towards that single diode that it likes. And uh, again, you are getting what you pay for. Uh, Radeon, it, the XR15 is what, $400 a light, and then the SP Reef light is uh, what, $120, 130 something like that. So there's a pretty big difference in price, but if you're just starting out and you you want to grow SPS and you want to be successful, there's no reason why you can't use the SP Reef lights or the Mars Aquas. Those LED lights grow Acropora, they grow SPS. Are you going to get the best coloration? Probably not because of the spectrum might not be as good as it is on an XR15. But uh, I haven't looked in directly in the specifics for all the spectrums between those types of lights. Um, I just went with the XR15s because the SP Reef lights had an option to be a part of the 300 gallon and it fell through. So I went a different direction for lighting. And uh, yeah, so it really it really comes down to uh, what you want to spend. But you're, if you just want to grow coral, you can use an, a black box. And if you want to spend some money and have a little bit more controllability and possibly grow better coral, go ahead and uh, get to the Radeon. So hopefully uh, that answers your question. Uh, number two, what would you say, uh, would you say that the Kessel is equal to Radeon's? Um, the it, Kessel's different. Um, right now I have those two AP700s over the frag tank and they are about 26, 28 inches above that uh, four foot by two foot tank. And uh, I have not done any par readings with the AP 700s over the uh, 300, which is 24 by 30 tall. And um, I will say that I'm getting much more penetration in par at the bottom of the glass on the 300. And I don't think I would have gotten that with the uh, AP 700s. I just, I don't think it has the, the power to really get the deep um, par readings into the tank, the, the penetration of light. But it does have an awesome spread. The controllability is nice. The fact that no one can just log in and mess with it, um, it's it's nice. I like that aspect of the Kessels. And uh, it really comes down to whatever you know your budget is. They're roughly the same per puck or diode, uh, if you want to call it that, or group of LEDs. So you're paying about the same price. It really just comes down to what you want to use. And I'm glad that I got the AP700 so I could see the difference between the two lights. And uh, yeah. I, I, I like them both for what they give me. I like the AP700 on the frag tanks. It gives an awesome spread and allows me to have one set of lights. And then I love the um, uh, XR15s because they uh, have great light penetration to really get that 200 par at the bottom glass of a 30 inch tall tank is is pretty awesome. Uh, the last question here is, uh, I have got a few ugly brown acros I'm trying to color up. Have you ever received a brown acro or one turned brown on you? If so, did you ever color it up and what did you do? I know I, I know you, you got a lot going on, thanks for doing this. Uh, well, uh, brown acropora usually come in if, the, if you get it from a tank that uh, has uh, higher nutrients, or maybe it's a maricultured acro just needs time to color up, or uh, there just wasn't enough light on it when it was in this previous tank. And yes, I've gotten, most of my acros I've gotten um, have been darker in color, and of course with the higher light that I have in my 300, as well as the lack of nutrients, which is just always a struggle, um, I, the color always changes pretty dramatically on my acros within a few weeks. So it's pretty easy. You just got to have the appropriate levels uh, depending on your nutrients. Um, if you have a lack of nutrients, you're going to have uh, more of a lighter color coral, not so much a better color coral. You might have a lighter color coral. And um, of course, make sure your lighting is in the correct par range between that uh, 250, 350. And again, you can go up a little bit higher. Um, but uh, yeah, you just got to have a really stable, not so high nutrient tank with good lighting and your, your acro will uh, get better color and it will only take a few weeks for sure. All right. Hopefully that answers your questions and thanks for the email. All right, moving on to our next email. It's from David, and hopefully, David, you got this email before you moved. I, I noticed on Facebook that you guys were in the process of that, and I tried to answer it as quickly as possible. But for everybody else, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the email. I'm going to be moving soon, and the next place is about 10-minute drive away, but I wanted to get your opinion on how to move the tank with minimal issues. I do have a 2-inch sand bed that I've been told in the past you can't disturb the sand bed or you will need to remove or replace it. Uh, what are your thoughts as I will always love the videos keep them up and good work all right so 
Uh, basically, because it's two inches, I wouldn't worry about it. It's one of those things that you could siphon out all the sand while you're removing the water to relocate the tank. You could take that opportunity to clean the sand bed, which would be a good thing. You can run a garden hose through it, get all the fines out of it, and fish poop and whatever else you got going on in there. And then you can put it back in the tank. Or if you don't want to do that, you can simply trash the sand and start over with some new sand. Um, given that it's only two inches, you're not going to have those big pockets of that denitrifying uh, gas or bacteria. So you don't have to worry about that getting in the tank and causing issues. And uh, so I wouldn't overstress that or worry about it uh, so much. So uh, moving the tank, I usually, when they're close by, I will go ahead and take all the water out of the tank, put it in big brute trash cans if I so choose to save the water or make new water at the new location. Uh, given that maybe you already moved your RODI system over there. And then go ahead and take the rock out, put it in buckets, transfer it with transfer it with water that you've already taken out of the tank. And then at that point, you have the fish out of there, the rock out of there, the coral. You can go ahead and start removing that sand bed via siphoning, or you can scoop it out with a, a shovel or whatever you got going on in there. And uh, clean it, and then once you set up the tank, put it all back in there, you'll be good to go. Um, that's about it. I really don't overthink it when it comes to a small sand bed. If you're rocking like the four and a half, five, six inch considered a deep sand bed, then at that point I would, uh, again, remove everything and then toss the sand out. You could clean it if you want to, but with a deep sand bed, I, it's just a lot of sand to be messing with. So I usually just buy new sand at that point. So, uh, yeah, so hopefully that answers your questions and good luck with the move, David. All right, moving on to our last question. I think that's going to be it for this video, given the fact that we're moving into the 10 minute mark. Uh, it is from Alex. It says, how do you suggest quarantine a Mandarin? I don't want to transfer anything to my main display, but I don't know how to keep it alive for four weeks in quarantine with most uh, feeding with live food. Okay, well, Mandarins can be pretty tricky. I will say that I've gotten, uh, out of five Mandarins, I've gotten two of them through quarantine with a half a dose of copper. I've, I've done it. I've seen it done before. But again, if you're spending that kind of money, you don't want to risk it. Don't do it. The safest thing for you to do would be uh, do the transfer method. I don't know if you've looked up looked it up before, but it's pretty easy. Go ahead and Google a quarantine transfer method. I've done this for those types of fish like the, uh, the copper bands, that kind of stuff that don't like the medications. You could do the uh, you set up one quarantine. You're going to need two quarantine tanks. So you're going to set up one. You're going to put the fish in there. Let it be in there for uh, 48 hours to 72 hours. I usually do the 72, and then you're going to transfer it to the next tank. Drain out that other one, uh, redo it, clean it, make sure it's good to go with new uh, water. Every 72 hours, swapping it. And I do this. I know most people only do it for two weeks, but I do it for the entire month. And uh, it is a pain, but you know it is one of those things that if you want to avoid the medication, you can do that. Also, using like... Um, uh, Prazi Pro, I've been okay with that. It didn't cause any issues. It does the internal stuff. Um, but if you want to stay away from copper completely, you can do that. I've never put a Mandarin through hyposalinity, and I have yet to look it up if they can make it through hyposalinity. But that could be another option that you might want to uh, do some research on. So uh, hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully that answers your question. And good luck through quarantine. I'm getting a, um, speaking of quarantine, tomorrow or the day after, I'm getting a uh, clown tang for the 300, a fox face, and I got a purple tang that's going to be here from a local hobbyist. So those will be the next three tanks going into the 300 as long as everybody, of course, makes it through quarantine. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, yeah, guys, that's about it for the weekly or the email q and I guess it's not weekly because I'm only doing it probably twice a month now, uh, given my new schedule. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for Wednesday. We're going to be doing some maintenance on the powerheads on the 300 because uh, one of them is dead. So we're going to have to go and take them out, clean them, see what's wrong with it. I do have another motor for one of those um, WP60. So we'll see what's up with that. All right, guys. Well, until Wednesday, I will see you later. And thanks for watching the video. Peace.